Welcome back everyone, Jose Twin One Crisis here and today there's a new episode of the Mendoza career on F1 Challenge 99-202. The F1 World Championship enters round 5 at the Spanish Circuit de Catalunya in, of course, Spain. It is a very well-known track, has been on the calendar for quite a while now and has been famous for some drives like, for example, Michael Schumacher's 1996 drive where he utterly obliterated the field. But otherwise, this is a track that's not quite known for its racing. It is one of the most famous tracks in terms of testing. A lot of teams come here and do their testing with no issue whatsoever. But in terms of racing, it is a high down for circuit connected by a lot of corners that are pretty aero dependent and there's a lot of dirty air and it's very difficult to overtake. There's only one realistic overtaking spot, actually two, never mind. One is the end of the main straight and the other one is at the beginning of sector three. Not that easy to overtake. As also mentioned, this is a very, well, not quite heavy, but high downforce racetrack because there's a lot of time to be gained in the corners in the circuit. Tarawar is expected to be serious with a lot of right-handed right -handed corners putting a lot of pressure on the front left tire. So expect two stop strategies to dominate across this race, maybe with occasional three stop strategy, although we doubt those will work around here. As for the weather, we expect mostly dry weather throughout the sessions with the exception of practice 4 and the qualifying session we do expect to see some rain during the end of practice 4 we expect also rain during qualifying we also expect it to clear out by the end so don't assume that the lap times will be affected by the rain expect it to dry out and normal ser uh, service to resume towards the end of qualifying it is the usual suspects in the front two rows, Mika Hakkinen from Michael Schumacher, a 99 from Hakkinen and Schumacher, but 610, uh, 600 of a second between them. Then you have David Coulthard in third with a 20-0, Rubens Barrichello with a 21 decent lap, and then there's a significant gap between them all the way down to Jacques Villeneuve in fifth. Six is Heinz Harold Friends, and then you have Jarno Trulli with the first 21 0. Then you have Giancarlo Fisichella 21 1. Raul Schumacher and Button, both Williams in the same row. Very close Button to Raul Schumacher in this particular qualifying session. Then you have Josh Verstappen in the arrows 21 2, very close to the Williams. Alexander Wurtz 21 4, he's been underperforming so far. Benetton is definitely not happy with his performance. Then you have Mika Salo and then Eddie Irvine, both with a 21-4. Then you have Alex Mendoza, 21-9. As I mentioned, he will be behind Eddie Irvine. Pedro Diniz with a 22-0. Decent time for the Sauberman. Gaston Matsakane is next, impressively beating his teammate by one tenth of a second. Nick Heifel is right behind, and right behind that is Marc Chenet, just barely fails to beat the Prost. Then you have Pedro De La Rosa, who did not have a good session at all. Ricardo Santa and Jan Alesi are the final men on this grid. As it happens, those three failed to set lap times when the track was at its driest. And if you needed a reminder on how this championship is looking so far, Michael Schumacher with 30 points has a 4 point lead over Mika Hakkinen. David Coulthard is third with a significant gap to them, he is down to 12 points along with Rubens Barrichello. Alex Mendoza is 11th over Jarno Trulli who only has 4 points, Jacques Villeneuve has 3 points, he's in 7th, Giancarlo Fisichella and Heinz Harald Frensen are tied for 8th with 2 points, a bit disappointing from Frensen who was very, very close in the 1999 championship. Finally, you have Raul Schumacher and Ricardo Zonta with one point apiece, tied for 10. Also a bit disappointing from Williams, as you would have expected them with their BMW work support to be a bit higher. As for the constructor standings, Ferrari lead the way with 42 points over McLaren with just 38, 
Jaguar has 11 points, all coming from Mendoza. Jordan has 6 points. VAR Honda has 4 points. And Benetton has 2 points. Final Williams in 7th, all of their points coming from Raul Schumacher. A single solitary one of them, may I add. Alright, everything is done, the preparations are done. I'm pretty sure the drivers are out there ready to get going. So let's get down there again and see who will prevail today. On board with Jacques Villeneuve who will give us a very good initial look of the opening of the race, the clutches are engaged and it's time to go. Solid start from the front four, absolutely, yeah, they're gonna keep it together. Everyone's gonna stay in a, in a train and... I'm sorry, have you seen the start Mendoza has just made? That was amazingly good. Anyway, the front four is Hakkinen, Schumacher, Coulthard and Rubens Barrichello right behind them. It's uh, uh, the Shaq Villeneuve, actually. Then you have Frenzen. Uh, solid work from Mendoza, who's managed to climb a hell of a lot of places very quickly. He had a very good start and made good use of the long straight to be able to pass people. And he's passing people again. And he's through journal, truly. Decent job by the Venezuelan. He's looking very agile as is. As for the front four, nothing has changed. It's been... It, it, Michael Schumacher is trying to get Mika Hakkinen, but it's just not there. It, it, it's just not happening. In the back, Mendoza is still making progress, although he he's managed to hold it up truly just fine. It's just the opening lap. He's trying to annoy. He's trying to annoy Ralph Schumacher, although you will expect Ralph to remain ahead. Now he's attacking Ralph. Can he actually get this move done? I doubt it. Or maybe. Ralph is. Yeah, he could not defect, defend from that. Mendoza managed to hold onto the inside line, and he is now. This is. Let me see. Let, let, let me see the timing sheets. He's eight now. Solid start from the Venezuela, may, may I add. On board with Mark Genet, who has reported some steering issues. He's been doing just fine following uh, Gaston Mazzacane and Pedro de la Rosa. De la Rosa just went through. Mazzacane and Mark Genet has spun. I think those steering issues might have worsened. He's going to try to take it back on track. We're hearing that his, oh, his steering may have just ceased and he just went straight into the wall. But that's going to be our first DNF of this race, Mark Genet. Mendoza's showing absolutely no signs of slowing down, although that's probably because he's on a three-stop strategy. His pace has been absurd considering the pace of Eddie Irvine. He's most likely on a two-stop, on a three-stop strategy. And he's now trying to attack Heinz or friends. And again, this is not the pace you usually see from a Jaguar. He's trying to get it in there. He's still in there. It's gonna be an annoyance for Frenzen into here the final two corners. Is he there? Yeah, he's still there. Frenzen sent a sign flying and Mendoza is through. Mendoza got the position and something we've, uh, we've also seen is that Mendoza has a very low downforce package for the track. His stars are suffering, but overtaking, not that difficult for him. Now, can he, can he catch Jacques Villeneuve? I really wonder when this man has to pit, and he's absolutely fearless today. Really, really risk a collision there with Villeneuve, but in the end it did not happen. Good job Villeneuve for avoiding that. He's really trying to put Shaq under pressure, and I think he's managed to do so so far. Now the fight for fifth. Can Mendoza catch up? Remember, he has very low downforce, and he seems to be gaining quite quick. He might not be able, he's gonna try anyway. He just slings it in there, manages to park it right in front of Shaq Villeneuve, and he's through. Fifth place for Mendoza. Now it's time to see how much time, no, Villeneuve is trying to attack now, but that attack has been defused. Time to see how much time Mendoza can gain as he's now in front of Villeneuve. Let's see what he can do. Can he actually manage to hold to his position? I doubt it, especially after the pit stops. As mentioned, the Jaguar team has already called Mendoza into the pits. 
this will be his second of three stops of this afternoon so far his pace has been pretty good the fresh tires really making a difference around this track which is what you will expect but the fact that the three stop is this fast has really impressed some teams and as well as the tire supplier i'm pretty sure they were expecting the two stop really faster This fight right in front of us, that's Giancarlo Fisichella from Benetton and Mendoza from Jaguar leads us to some of the news around the paddock, which is that oh, trying to attack, trying to get the position, but anyway, some of the rumors is that Benetton is looking into hiring Mendoza mid-season to replace Alexander Wurz. They have not been impressed with Wurz's performance, whereas Mendoza has done excellent so far, at least according to them, Mendoza gaining very much. Remember, low downforce configuration compared to most teams, and he's through. So yeah, Benetton is trying to get him. At least that's what's rumored around the paddock. We'll see what happens. Allegedly, they are supposed to have a meeting before the next round of the F1 Championship, but we will see. We will see what comes out of it. All of the action that has transpired so far means this is a fight for 6th place, 1 point for both men. Oh, a Mendoza's run, Mendoza's run, I think this, oh, Fisichella nearly crashes into him and nearly spins himself, but Mendoza somehow managed to keep it going and pretty much keep it in the right direction, he's been pretty good doing exactly that not exactly a skill you want a racing driver to have to have because that means they've practiced a lot but at the very least we know that on some spins he can actually keep the car going in the right direction another team with some reliability concerns has been the Prost team in this case we're seeing John Lacey who has reported some brake fade we hope that doesn't turn into an issue soon, but you know how F1 goes, at times the NFs come at you in, in, in many different ways, that was a very weird spin, that was a very interesting spin, I think that's going to be him, yeah, he's not moving at all, that's John Alesi out of this race, again, more disappointment for Prost, who expected many things from this season. And it's happening again, Mendoza is right behind Jacques Villeneuve who is just coming out of the pits. Can he get that position? Doesn't look like it. it's pretty far back, it's gonna have to be a very long move and he actually gets it on absolute disregard for, for the 1997 champion. Nearly makes him spin, just went around the outside like he wasn't even there, that's, that's, that's a brave move alright. I'm pretty sure Jacques Villeneuve is not happy at all with that move probably will let him know after the race, probably screaming right now at the radio, but Mendoza is ahead of him, once again. Mika Hakkinen rounding the final uh, corner set, meanwhile Michael Schumacher right now is in the pits. He had some very fast lap times, but at the same time he was obstructed by traffic plenty times. There is Michael, and there is Mika all the way back, you saw him there. Maybe Mika is just ahead, 
I think Hakkinen is gonna end up ahead. Yeah, no problem at all. Mika Hakkinen takes the lead again of the Spanish Grand Prix and he's probably going to win the Spanish Grand Prix. You know how difficult it is to overtake around this track. Heavy downforce, a lot of dirty air around most corners. It's just impossible to overtake. Very neat battle for 6th developing right here. Um, Alex Mendoza just fitted for his final stop of this race. Similarly, Ralph Schumacher right behind also pitted for the last time this race. Uh, we usually expect the Williams to be faster than the Jaguar. Mendoza has shown really good pace, but now both him and Ralph Schumacher are on the same strategy. We should expect Ralph Schumacher to catch up to Mendoza now. Can Mendoza hold on? Well, let's see. Mika Hakkinen has led a pretty spotless race. There have been not many mistakes in this afternoon for the Finnish man and he's going to be rewarded with another win. That's going to be very important for the championship. I think that will give him back the lead. No, actually. Yes, indeed. It will give him back the lead of the World Drivers Championship. Mika Hakkinen wins the 2000 Spanish Grand Prix with his championship rival. Michael Schumacher second and back here we see the fight for 6th place is gonna be 1 point for Alex Mendoza right behind their main rivals Williams finish 7th but at the top of the championship we are now tied again with Mika Hakkinen getting the tiebreaker because of more wins. So the top 3 finished the exact same way they started with Mika Hakkinen winning the Spanish Grand Prix from Michael Schumacher and David Coulthard. Heinz Harald Frensen, good decent charge, puts it on 4th, Jacques Villeneuve doesn't actually move from his position, finished as 5th with Alex Mendoza from all the way from 15th on the grid, finishing a lap down but in 6th place with a single point going to the Jaguar team. 7th will be Ralph Schumacher with Jensen Button of Williams as well being 8th. Giancarlo Fisichella loses a position, he's 9th. Mika Salo is up to 10th. Eddie Irvine 11. Ricardo Solta also gaining 9 places, puts it 12th. Pedro Diniz, Nick Heidfeld are the last qualified runners. John Lacy, Pedro De La Rosa, Jos Verstappen, Rubens Barrichello, Jarno Trulli, Alex Wurz, Gaston Mazzacane and Marc Genet are the men that DNF out of this race. As we take a look at the driver standings now, Mika Hakkinen and Michael Schumacher are tied at 36 points. But Mika Hakkinen has the lead and he has the wins tiebreaker over Michael Schumacher. David Coulthard down at 16 points, he is third. Alex Mendoza and Rubens Barrichello are tied in fourth, but Mendo both of them with 12 points. Mendoza has a second place finish over Barrichello's third place finish, which means he's ahead. Heinz Harold Frensen and Jacques Villeneuve are tied for sixth, with Jarno Trulli in eighth position, Giancarlo Fisicola in ninth, Raul Schumacher and Ricardo Sontap both tied at tenth, both with a single point to their name. In the constructor standings, McLaren and Mercedes take the lead, four points over Ferrari with 52 over Ferrari's 48. Third is Jaguar Cosworth, 12 points to their name, over Jordan Mugen Honda with nine points, VAR Honda has six points, Benetton has two points, they're sixth, and Williams BMW are seventh. Ladies and gentlemen, that would be it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed. Comment, like, subscribe, the usual YouTube stuff. And if you really, really like this com content, there's a cough link down there if you want to support this. Next up is the European Grand Prix, and I hope to see you then.